Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's another sad occasion that uh, you have the uh, unfortunate pleasure of seeing my face uh, on social media and on the news again tonight, given another horror weekend on South Australian roads. The three lives lost, one each, on Friday night, uh, Saturday, and again uh, last night. Um, this continues an absolutely horror trend on South Australian roads uh, so far this year, uh, with 35 lives lost now in just on two and a half months. Now that is a devastating figure uh, in terms of road safety outcomes, but it's incredibly devastating for the families who've lost loved ones on our roads so far this year. The first death this weekend uh, occurred around about 5.30 p.m. on Friday uh, in and around uh, Vine Vale, which is in the Barossa. Um, a, a well-known uh, person to our community or links to our community uh, was killed uh, whilst riding his motorcycle uh, in the Barossa Valley, uh, left the road and collided with a tree and sadly, despite the best efforts, uh, his life was lost. Um, our condolences go to the Westhoff family. There's at least three football clubs, a local footy club, the Centrefield Footy Club and the broader AFL club, which demonstrates the impact that a life lost on South Australian roads can have in an instant. Equally devastating, at 12.30am on Saturday the 18th of March, there was a significant crash at Hackham West between two vehicles. We're investigating uh, whether speed was a contributing factor uh, to this crash. We know that it was a, a Lancer vehicle with two 17-year-olds inside that impacted <coughs> or T-boned a car that was exiting onto uh, the main road. We're still investigating the full circumstances of what's uh, happened in this instance. But again, an innocent life of a passenger inside that vehicle um, is, is again uh, an example of how quickly life can change for a family and for, for communities. <coughs> you only have to look on uh, social media and in the mainstream media again uh, this morning to see the pouring of tributes uh, for the lives lost so far on our roads, uh, and particularly you know, the wonderful people uh, that are being remembered uh, this weekend who have actually lost their lives uh, on our roads. And then just before 10 p.m. last night, another example where there's a, a T-bone or a right angle crash where a vehicle has been traveling along Northeast Road and a woman has been exiting a, a service station or a petrol station and has been hit by a vehicle and she has died as a result of, of that collision. The driver of the other vehicle, uh, I understand, was largely uninjured and that person has been charged, a 22-year-old male has been charged uh, with causing death by dangerous driving. Witness accounts prior to that crash uh, have that vehicle um, weaving in and out of traffic and also will be investigating what role um, speeding may have played or was alleged to have played in this particular crash as well. What's completely evident out of these three crashes on this weekend is that every single one of them was preventable. You only have to again look back on social media to have a look at some of the comments attributed to families and loved ones. And I think it was the daughters of Dr Heath who um, have actually, sorry, Miss Heath, who have actually put it just as well as I could in this circumstance. Don't speed. Don't drink and drive. Wear your seatbelt. Don't drive dangerously. And don't be distracted while you're driving. This is quite a simple formula as to how we can actually reduce the number of lives lost and tragedies that we're seeing on our roads not only this year, but in previous years and into the future. So if you're not going to listen to me, listen to the heartache that you can hear in the posts online from those family members who are asking the same message. Don't speed, don't drink and drive, 
don't be another statistic on South Australian roads. Given um, the <coughs> recent changes to road laws that have been announced uh, late last year and some earlier this year, the gentleman that's been charged with the crash last night, he'd be facing some pretty serious penalties. Yeah, this is the other thing that uh, people don't realise, and, and I want to reach out here particularly to the younger people who are out there driving. You know, we have a 17 year old driver who is uh, still in hospital with some serious injuries and we're still investigating what that person's role was in this crash. And we have a 22 year old driver who's been charged with some extremely serious offences and potentially can face jail time. So there's a 17 year old and a 22 year old drivers who had their whole lives in front of them. Their families are grieving themselves uh, this weekend because of um, these crashes and you know, what that means for their loved ones as well. But also let's have a think about um, those other people who have lost their lives on our roads this weekend when they have been uh, going about their business and caught up in a crash that has resulted in their lives being lost or one of the people in their vehicles um, uh, lives being lost. Now this is, um, this is just something that I think particularly our younger generation, I'd really implore you to get. Um, you are not invincible, you are not bulletproof, and there is no kudos in actually putting yourself on social media, doing stupid things in your car, because you might be um, liked by your friends on TikTok for five seconds, but you may end up on the front page of a newspaper or the headline in the next news surface if you continue to drive like that and lose your life on our roads. Are you alleging that this driver did speed? I have seen vision this morning of the Ford Mustang hammering along the northwest road. Is that part of, is that the allegation that you're putting forward? Um, what I can say is that we have some witness accounts uh, that describe the driving behaviour of the Mustang on northeast road at Windsor Gardens um, in proximity to the crash. Um, we are investigating whether speed is a contributing factor in this crash. Um, but what we do know is that the Mustang <coughs> was travelling along at North East Road. Um, a 40-year-old woman has pulled out from a service station and has been impacted um, by that Mustang. Now, it's not every single day that you pull out from a side street or a shop or a car park um, to be hit by another vehicle uh, which causes the amount of damage and a loss of life that we've seen twice <coughs> on this weekend. This man is obviously now allegedly responsible for the death of a person. Why should he get police bail? It's a really vexing question, isn't it, in relation to um, as to how we actually consider bail, and there are a range of different considerations that we do have. Um, for the families, it was probably a, a difficult to explain regardless of how we actually justify that. But there are a range of considerations that police and the bail authorities take into account when uh, considering whether to actually release someone on bail. Um, I don't have those considerations directly before me, but regardless, um, you know, this 22-year-old male has been charged with some extremely serious offences, uh, which do have jail time as a option for the courts to consider um, in the fullness of time when that, is, when that is before the courts. But the other thing for this person to consider you know, is um, what impact it's going to have on them um, in terms of being involved in a crash like this and you know, someone else um, losing their life. But what message does it send to the public <coughs> that if you drive a car and kill someone, you can still go home and send in your own bed at night? Like I said, it's a really difficult message for the public to understand, but um, what, I do, what I do want to reinforce is that um, this person was arrested they were placed in the cells. They have been charged with an extremely serious offence. There, um, there is the need for us to go through this investigation fully and to understand the full circumstances of how this crash occurred and um, the circumstances, the full circumstances behind it. So whilst, particularly for the family, it would be difficult to understand, it is not an unusual circumstance that this person uh, would be granted bail. Uh, the new laws do allow for this person's licence uh, to be taken away immediately uh, and regardless of the condition of the car, for that car should be impounded. Um, so there are significant instant 
uh, impacts for that particular person as well. But we do need to go through the process of actually conducting a full investigation and understanding the full circumstances. So has the license been revoked? Uh, I will get those details for you, but the legislation is there for his licence to be removed immediately um, when he was involved in a crash like this, and I'll confirm those details for you later. People are obviously not listening to these, these messages with, you know, police have come out in the past few weeks multiple times stressing the same message. Take me through, what, what, can, what can you do to get it in people's heads? Can you describe when your officers door knock these um, family of victims, can you describe how they're feeling at the time and what the potential, you know, the perpetrator, the potential person who gets behind the wheel and kills someone, you know, what what does their actions cause a family like that? I think it's pretty clear um, what the impacts are for, uh, for families and you only have to look at um, the articles in mainstream media, both print and also uh, TV media today to actually see what the impacts are. You only have to look on social line, uh, f uh, social on, on social media, um, for you know the comments that have been posted far and wide uh, from uh, people who know those people have been killed in the crashes this weekend. Um, what it's like for a police officer to um, go and uh, let a loved one, a next of kin, know that they one of their family members uh, has lost their lives on South Australian roads. Um, is uh, absolutely devastating. You know, we, our police officers are, are human too, and every time we deliver a death message to a family, particularly as it relates to someone who's lost their lives on, on the South Australian roads, you know, the first questions we get back is why, how, how could this happen? You know, this would never happen to me, but far too many people this is happening to on South Australian roads, particularly this year. I think if I was to reinforce this message, um, and implore people to actually heed what we're saying. There's no hero status in posting stuff online um, where you're speeding or where you're using your mobile phone or where you're behaving um, like an idiot on South Australian roads. That's not hero status. And like I said, if you post something online just to get your five minutes of fame in a vehicle at one point in time, you could be tomorrow's headline in the paper or on the news. Is um, the 22-year-old... <coughs> Uh, was there alcohol or drugs in his system and <clears throat> given he was 22, was he a P player? Uh, I don't have any information uh, in relation to uh, whether there was any alcohol or drugs involved uh, in the Windsor Gardens crash. Uh, that obviously forms part of our investigation uh, and as with every crash like this, uh, drives involved are uh, subjected to uh, toxology screens, so blood tests uh, as part of the investigation for these. Do you know if he was a P player? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head if he was a P player, no. He's, he would be given his 22, he's not restricted is he, in terms of his licence. So depending on when an individual gets their licence, depends on you know, what, uh, at what age they progress to a full licence. Um, this person who's 22 could well have progressed to a full licence and so um, had the same conditions uh, that, we all, uh, that we all do when we're on a full licence. Uh, the 17-year-old uh, from the Hackham West crash, I understand was uh, on their provisional licence, so there are other conditions um, that are required as part of that provisional driving, which includes um, what time of day and night you're allowed to drive, how many people you're allowed to have in your car, and that is something we're certainly exploring as part of our investigation with that crash, given that it was after midnight. Um, so, and, and these, these uh, particular restrictions are there for a reason, for younger people, because they're still inexperienced on our roads, despite having quite an extensive learning program and assessment program prior to getting their licence. But we do recognise that, um, particularly in their formative years and their formative driving years, that there are extra restrictions which are put in place as best as possible to try and keep them safe. But at the end of the day, it's people's choices which are causing these crashes. You know, we've been asked, and I've been asked a number of times in the first few months of this year, what's the answer? Well, the answer is quite simple. Don't speed, don't drink and drive, wear your seatbelt, don't be distracted, and don't drive dangerously. Under the new laws that are, I can't remember if they're still before Parliament or if they've been passed, we're going to the Naismith um, reform, would a Ford Mustang come under a car that would need a special licence? Yeah. So again, I don't have that level of uh, that level of detail. It is still being worked through. Um, separately, uh, I, 
think the last update we had was it was the worst start for the Motel in, in a decade. Obviously now we're more than double what uh, it was this time last year. I, I can only presume it's probably worse than 10 years now. Uh, look, it is um, absolutely the, the worst start to um, uh, lives lost on South Australian roads in a significant number of years, probably beyond the last decade. Uh, and so that's why it's so critically important. And this is why, you know, we become quite frustrated and disappointed is that the amount of people who are dying on South Australian roads so far this year should actually be a warning to absolutely everybody that you are not invincible and that you actually need to be responsible on our roads because it can and does happen to you. Do you know when the, um, the road safety campaign is rolling out? So there are a variety of road safety campaigns that we already have in train and people would have seen uh, a lot of those campaigns uh, more regularly on the mainstream and also social media in recent times. We do have a new campaign in relation to motorcycles. Motorcycles feature quite heavily in the number of lives lost on our roads so far this year. So um, that will be coming out very soon. Uh, and we're also uh, looking at other road safety campaigns which do take a little while to actually um, get into production because they are very much research based. We want to make sure we uh, get the campaigns right to reach out to particular audiences. But we are looking at doing something uh, in the very near future, short term thing, to reach out to younger drivers. And um, just lastly, the, the allegations against this 22 year old, um, with witnesses reporting not only rocketing well beyond 100 k's an hour, but also weaving in and out of traffic. I mean, how would you describe that? Uh, I'll describe um, anyone's behaviour who, um, regards of where they are or what time of day or night they're driving, if you are um, weaving in and out of traffic, if you are driving above the posted speed limit, um, then you are not, um, you're not taking your responsibilities uh, seriously. In actual fact, I'd say if you are, um, wherever you are, like I said, weaving in and out of traffic or speeding, you are more than likely to end up killing yourself or killing somebody else. And that's a fact. The statistics back it up. If you speed and you drive dangerously, you'll either wind up killing yourself or somebody else in our roads. And it's a really simple thing to prevent. Do you know how the families responded to this 22 year old getting police bail? Uh, no. With the road toll where it is, is the police looking at doing any sort of um, blitz or increasing the amount of traffic police you have on the roads? So, along with uh, you know, the number of lives lost, uh, we are continually reinforcing the road safety message with our own people. Um, you know, this is not about um, statistics, this is not about in terms of you know, how many people we pull over and how many people get fined. This is about changing people's behaviours. You know, so our police officers have the ability to actually caution people uh, for doing the wrong thing on the roads, or they have the ability to actually fine people. And I would suggest that you know, in this environment, if you get pulled over, expect to get fined. Because if you get warned and you go home and you talk to your family about, oh, I just got let off by the cops, as opposed to, oh, I just got fined for being an idiot on the road and it's going to cost me this much and it's going to take me this long to save that much money up to pay that fine, that's a completely different message. That's a completely different warning to a family and a group of friends. Now, we have already doubled the number of drink and drug driving operations for the foreseeable future. And we are also ramping up how we can continue to increase our presence on South Australian roads, both in the regions and in the metropolitan area. The road toll, it does beg a belief, beg its belief, doesn't it? The road toll this year is insane. It is absolutely insane. And I don't understand why people don't get the message, particularly when you see me here almost every week and you read something in the paper or see something on the news or online every single week. Listen to the message. Have a read of those articles. Have a read of the, the heartfelt tributes that are coming from family and friends because at the rate we're going, that could be you. No one is immune to losing their life on South Australian roads if you don't drive responsibly and safely. Thank you.